name is David Thai. Uh, originally, I come from Vietnam, and now I'm uh, um, living in Canada as a glassmaker. Uh, I've been doing this for about 10 years now. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, some of the work that I make uh, in my collection. I used to collect Italian glass while I was in uh, university. And eventually, after I graduated, I ended up working in a, uh, a retailer that sells uh, French crystal. And I've been there for about a year. And then I decided maybe I can make this my own thing. And then so I went to school and learned this at Sheridan College. I was there for three years. And uh, from, from then we're on, I was an uh, official gas maker. Uh, my inspiration comes from uh, a lot of visual uh, Observations, let's say uh, movies, uh, uh, travels, and books, and magazines, and mostly the, that's the inspiration comes from there. For uh, glass bowls, uh, vessels, and sculptures, and this is all blown glass. Uh, we've covered uh, covered with Japanese silver foil, and the silver foil is applied to the hot glass. One is to uh, molten hot. And uh, so that the glass and the silver is fused together, and that's how these are made. So all the glass you see here is all blown glass. And to start the blow glass process, we start with the blowpipe. And uh, the blowpipe, the first thing we do with the blowpipe is pick up the color. The color is made out of a glass color. So let's say, for example, this color here, we start out with the blowpipe, and we heat up the blowpipe and heat up the color at the same time. And then the color is attached to the blowpipe and then we gather more clear glass on the blow pipe and then we blow it out. So when we blow it out, there's a color distribution. So you can see here, so there's more color here and less color here. And that is because when I work, I purposely leave a lot of color on here and less on the bottom to create this gradation effect. So you can see the different shades of the same color on one piece. Like this one is very similar to that, except this color is much lighter, so you see less gradation on it. So each individually, uh, they are all done very similar way, and depends on the color density, if the effect is a little bit different than each other. Uh, it also, also, this is also blown glass, and the reason why there's no color is because the glass is so dense that the light cannot go through. So if the light could go through, you can either see a purple or brown. But if because the light couldn't go through, you can only see black on the surface. So this is all hollow blown glass with silver foil on the surface. And the silver foil is removed to create the, the face. And the feature is cut with the traditional engraving wheel to expose the, the feature of the face. And then 24 karat gold leaf is added to enhance it. So that's how this is uh, made. Thing like this one here, there's a lot of, uh, we call it co-working, meaning the process is done after the glass is cooled down. Uh, on the other hand, for the bowl, we have here, everything is done when it's still hot. There's nothing to be done afterwards. So once this is done in the kiln and it's finished, there's, not, there's no changes to this. But this one here, uh, all this is done when it's cold. And this one is more uh, labor intensive because of the, the carving on the face. Um, in a week, I'm probably making about three or four pieces of this in a week. And also, I make everything, including the metal base, is all fabricated by me. So, everything is done by me, one person. The hardest part, I think, is perseverance, I think. Uh, when we start out, we, we plan you know, how things are made, but they never turn out that way. We always have to compromise what we plan and what the glass wants to be. So basically, this bowl is not exactly what I want, but it's pretty close. So I have to uh, think very fluidly you know, with the glass. And so that's how it is formed, based on what my interpretation it should be and what the glass wants to be. Uh, yes, they are, because it, each is individually made, it doesn't come from a mold or anything like that, so each one is slightly 
different, but they're very, very similar, you can see. I have uh, a few collections uh, since I started this business. Uh, this is just, you know, probably half of it. Uh, I always like to make an experiment, new uh, product line, new artwork, and uh, so that's keep, uh, keep me challenged. Uh, my other hobby is probably collecting glass still. But, uh, you know, they're getting very expensive, so uh, I do co collect small pieces of Italian glass. That's uh, one of my, my hobbies. And, and I do collect art from other artists as well. Mostly, uh, the when we work, it's always by feel, by experience, by sight, because you can't really tell how hot something is. Mm -hmm. Then only by experience when you know how the glass move and how what color it is. Is it red? Is it black? And then we can tell whether the glass is ready for a certain process. Well, I I only been doing it for ten years, so I can only tell from what I experience is uh, a lot of try and error. You, 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 and you also have to commit. You, you want to start something, you, you better try your best as long as you could and see how that thing turns out and never give up.